let me uh, let me get started right away. Um, I guess uh, I should write down the the um, standard strategy as a reminder to myself, and I'll just keep carrying it around from uh, uh, one screen to another screen. So let me write it down here. Uh, this is the steps in standard strategy. The first step is to draw the free body diagram. Sorry, I'm trying to be centered in the video. And the second step is to choose coordinate axis. So let me just say coordinate axis as a reminder. And really you're looking for the direction of acceleration. That's what's most important. And you break forces into components. And then finally, write down Newton's second law equation. And as a reminder, when you do step number four, you are most likely you haven't solved the problem yet. But what that sets you up for is writing, so step four is the writing down the system of equations. And what that sets you up for is now performing the algebra to finish the question. So let's go through that with this question from your homework. It says, uh, find the tension in each of the three cables supporting the traffic light if it weighs uh, some number of um, newtons, <laughs> round all answers to one decimal point and express your answer. Okay, so let me uh, start off with the standard strategy, draw the free body diagram. So this is the step where you should be taking the most, uh, if not the most amount of time, most uh, amount of thinking, most uh, amount of effort to be correct and to make sure you didn't forget anything. Because once you do step one correctly, then the rest of the steps are kind of mechanical. So it says draw free body diagram. Um, all right. So it's a force diagram. What forces am I drawing? If you are looking at the traffic light itself, the forces on the traffic light is a little bit boring. It's only going to have weight and the tension from this string directly attached to it. Mm. That doesn't give me much. I mean, all right, so it gives me that tension three is probably equal to weight uh, without doing a lot of the steps. I can see that if it's not moving down or up, then tension should equal weight. But I could do that without, I get that without the strategy. So here really the thing that I need to draw the diagram of is not the traffic light. It's uh, this point on the rope. So let me draw the diagram for the knot because that's really the interesting object for the purpose of this question here. So. Here's the free body diagram of the knot. So here's the knot. Now the knot has almost zero mass. So it's going to, and we are going to end up saying that the net force is equal to zero. That and to almost the zero mass. And also it's not accelerating. So it has like multiple reasons to have zero net force on the knot which is good, uh, they all are consistent with each other. So there's a tension force, T3, and that's the uh, one that's equal to weight. Let me just write that in as a reminder to myself again. And then there are these two tension forces that's going diagonally upward. So there's T1 and T2. And for this uh, particular situation, we have it a little bit easy. Acceleration is equal to zero. And in that situation, uh, I like to say we have complete freedom in choosing our coordinate axis. And I like to, in most of those cases, I like to pick a straight axis. That's the kind of same axis, or say it's the same default. 
sometimes you will see in the geometry where choosing a different axis might make your step number three easier where you don't have to break as many components. And I guess if somehow these angles added up to 90 degrees, I might have considered that, but they don't. So same axis, <laughs> straight axis is fine here. So, so that's step number one. I drew, oh, step number one and two. <laughs> I drew my free body diagram and defined the coordinate axis. Then I need to do step number three, and that's going to take the most uh, amount of time here. Let me uh, erase this some obvious things. And let me blow up this diagram a little bit so that um, it's easier for me to draw the component. All right, um, now it's bigger. Okay. Um, so uh, let me break, uh, well, uh, the uh, components, drawing the components is not too hard. This is the T2X, this is T2Y. And this is T1X, and this is T1Y. Uh, where you have to uh, pay attention and make sure you don't make a mistake is on, one second, is on um, labeling the angles. So you are given the angles here. And you want that uh, angle represented somewhere in the triangle. So I'm given this angle here. Let's see, these two are parallel. So that means that angle is this angle, which let me label it theta one so that I don't have to keep writing 41 degree. And that 63 degree angle, it's this angle here, same deal. I have two parallel lines. So this is going to be my theta two, which is 63 degrees. All right, once you have located the angle within the triangle that you have drawn for decomposing your force into components, then now it's uh, easy to write out what the components are. You have um, the adjacent side should be T1, cosine theta one. The opposite side should be T1 sine theta one. Let's continue. Oops, move that label not out of the way. We have T2 cosine theta one as theta two for the adjacent side and T2 sine theta two for the opposite, side opposite to the angle. All right, um, I'm done with step number three. I have broken forces into components. Once that's done, this is the most uh, valuable tool you have in solving this problem. This is basically a summary of everything given in this question in one view. You, and once uh, you are done, correctly through step number three. Step number four should be as simple as reading the information off of this diagram. So let me demonstrate that. So in step number four, we are writing Newton's second law equations. So the, um, the vector equation, it stands for really two equations, net force in the X direction and the net force in the Y direction. All right, let's uh, just read off the information. What are my forces in the X direction? I have T1 cosine theta one going to left. I have T2 cosine theta two going to right. So let's say right word is positive. Then the sum of those two components is T2 cosine theta two minus T1 cosine theta one. Uh, I like to use this convention where all the symbols I write down stand for the scalar quantity. So all the variables, unless otherwise noted, are assumed to be positive. Um, so I'm putting the sign information within the equation. That's something I do. Um, I guess we don't have to, but I recommend it. Um, <laughs> net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And here, acceleration is zero. So this is equal to zero. Uh, force along the y direction. Here I have a few more forces. I have T3, that's all along the y, and then T1 sine theta one, T2 sine theta two. So I need to write out three terms total. So T1 sine theta one plus 
t2 sine theta 2 and then downward minus t3 is equal to 0. All right, uh, let's count our knowns and unknowns. We don't know T1 or T2. Do we know T3? And the answer is yes. It's a, a T3 is equal to weight W. So let's treat T3 as a known. It's something we can substitute in pretty easily later. So we have two equations, two unknowns. It's a, it ought to be solvable. Once you have done that check, then you are done with the step number four. You have your system of equations and the rest is, as they say, algebra. Um, <laughs> um, this time, let me actually go through the algebra. So I won't actually plug in the numbers. I kind of hate plugging in numbers and you can do that yourself. <laughs> Everyone in this class knows how to plug in numbers in the calculator. Um, so let me just to demonstrate the algebra. The, um, so, the strategy I like the most is a substitution strategy. I know portable TA sometimes uh, recommends like a linear combination and that's fine. If you feel comfortable with that, then please, by all means do. Um, you don't have to stick to just uh, using a uh, simpler technique. Uh, linear combination does save some time uh, at certain places. But the reason I like a substitution is because it always works. It, um, <laughs> sometimes it's a little bit more tedious, but it's a, a basic skill that you can use over and over and you don't have to be super fancy with it. So let me use substitution. And here's one key thing to remember when you are using substitution. Um, the quantity you want, you have to solve for it at the very end. So for this question, it doesn't matter too much but let me pretend that for whatever reason that I care more about T1 than any other variable. Then what I do isn't actually to solve for T1, it's to solve for everything else. So as an example, I'm going to solve equation one for T2, oops, for T2. And it's going to seem counterintuitive first a few times because I want T1, but I'm not solving for T1. Well, let's solve equation one for T2 and see why. So solving equation one for T2, what I need to do is I need to move this term over to the right-hand side. So then it changes sign. It becomes T2 cosine theta two is equal to T1 cosine theta one. Let's finish solving for T2. So, it, uh, divide the both sides by cosine theta two. So I get T2 is equal to T1 times cosine theta one over cosine theta two. And this expression here illustrates why I solve first for something that I don't want in the end. It's uh, because of this. It's a T2 is in, term of, in terms of an unknown quantity. So this, uh, this equation itself, it doesn't actually give me T2. But what it is, is a tool that I can use to eliminate T2 from other equations. So that's what I mean by using substitution. When we say we are using substitution, we are using an expression we are using substitution, as in substituting this expression, T1 times cosine theta one over cosine theta two to eliminate T2. So um, let me call this three, substitute three into the remaining equation is two. So this will eliminate T2 from my system of equations and give me a single equation in terms of single unknown T1. So doing the substitution, I get T1 sine theta one plus T1 cosine theta one over cosine theta two minus, and it's T3, but let me plug in the W now. Minus W is equal to zero. 
So you can see that I can factor out T1 from these two terms. So let me put parentheses here and I factored this out. And I can solve for T1. Solving for T1, this is what I get. So I move W over to the other side and I'm dividing by this term here. So T1 is equal to W divided by sine theta one plus cosine theta one over cosine theta two. And you can um, make this a little bit prettier um, with the expressions and whatnot, but it, it doesn't actually simplify all that much. So at this point, now we are ready to plug in numbers and I would plug in numbers. <laughs> and once you get T1, uh, numerical value of T1, then you can plug that into this expression here. That's why I keep intermediate work because I'll probably be needing it. I can plug that numerical value into here to get T2. And oh, I already knew T3, that's just the weight. Um, so this is an application of standard strategy. And this particular example is simpler than most that you will see, mainly because the acceleration is zero. Uh, when acceleration is zero, we call that uh, static equilibrium, and that tends to be when... Um, so we'll actually come back to static equilibrium later in the semester. Uh, we'll make it a little bit more complicated with the rotation, torque, and whatnot. So we'll have more fun with that later. <laughs>